and our confession. It will be on October the 28th, this Friday, and uh, it starts at 7. And come and expect the glory of God to fall on this place. Amen. We're believing for it. We're expecting for it. We're decreeing and declaring for it. And God will arise out of this place, and this will be a house of prayer and worship. And we are praying that this will be a very portal in this part of town that will go out all over this town this state and this nation and we declare that in Jesus name so now I want to uh, remind you that you can call our prayer line at any time at 407-490-4019 407-490-4019 so now as usual we're going to read our Psalms 91 and believe that it's our protection God has his hand on us. He's lifting us up. He sent us angels to protect us and surround us. And we are, going, we are going to keep declaring this over us until God takes us home. And then we'll be in the perfect place. Are you ready? He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him I will trust. Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. He shall, truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I shall satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. 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 All right. Awesome. Praise God. God is good. Amen. All right. Let's take this thing down. All right. It stays there. <laughs> you got to figure out all these nuances. But anyway, God is doing amazing things in our lives, right? You know, uh, many are living in fear, but God has given us the greatest opportunity. The greatest opportunity for us is to be able to live by faith. You know, in spite of the facts of life, the facts of life is always trying to dictate, always trying to tell us what is happening and what is not happening and how to control, how not to control, how to live, how not to live. Everything is being forced. Many times I see um, that is the pattern that is going on all around us. So um, God has given us a powerful tool to use our faith. I always encourage you to remember this thing. I don't mind reminding you every single possible time I could. Faith unused is faith useless. 
It is useless for us if we don't use it. So we have uh, right now, um, uh, there are a lot of prayer requests that continue to come to us. Um, people from all around, there are so many things that I continue to be battling and counseling with people. Uh, uh, there, are, there are things that are happening all around that God is converting things and God is moving things in, the, in his direction, in the way he has ordained and orchestrated. Um, one of the requests right now for us is, uh, you know, uh, Liz is not feeling well. So she needs us to be praying for her that uh, she would completely uh, uh, be healed and recover from it. All right. Uh, can we join our faith together for her? Father, in Jesus' name, we come in agreement with your plan, with your plan of healing, with your plan of uh, deliverance, Lord. We release that healing upon her body right now. Our sister lives, and we claim her for us, for our kingdom, and for your healing, Father. By your stripes, we were healed, so we speak that healing over her body right now. We take charge over her body, and we command the sickness to flee. Let the healing, we, we declare the healing over her body, right from the crown of her head to the tip of her toe right now. Whatever the cold, whatever the cough, whatever that may be, the body shall recover in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen, Amen. Amen. All right. <coughs> Let's get into our Bible study, which is again uh, about faith. You know, we were studying last uh, couple of weeks uh, the, uh, uh, s the Hall of Fame uh, for f faith heroes. We have seen that. Um, this is my prayer for all of us, and this is uh, my prayer for me also, that we be found in the path of faith. Amen. That when Jesus comes, he finds us in the path of faith, that we are fighting our fight of faith rather than being caught in all the other distractions that the world is trying to throw at us. Every single system is trying to get your attention. Everybody that is out there is trying to get your attention. Now, we have to figure out, are we going to give our attention to the systems of the world, or are we going to give our attention to the will of God? The choice that we make, you know, remember this thing again and again, I tell you. You know, the, uh, the faith is not an abstract. It is not something that, is, that comes out of a thin air. This is not magic. The Christian faith is very constructive. It is very constructive. It has a point A and point B. It has an input and an exit. It has everything that we can think of, quantify it. That's why Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. It's a substance. We don't deal with uh, 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 faith that is that doesn't have uh, the power behind it or the substance behind it, we deal with a faith that is real. You know, many times people deal with faith as something that is not real. Let me tell you something, your faith is more real than your breathing. Because the breath of life came through faith. When God breathed life into humans, it came through faith. So um, nothing on this earth can exist without faith. But what we are doing is when we are living by sight, we are degrading them. We are kind of uh, disintegrating them, bringing them down to a place where they cannot succeed. It's like uh, even in our uh, lifetime we have seen this. There used to be time where there used to be long, time, long periods of warranty or even lifetime warranties. These days we know if we buy something, particularly electronics, we expect it to die in 12 months. We expect it to be gone in 12 months because that's, that's their life. Now, now, we have gotten so used to replacing things so much that we are also trying to replace faith. The lifestyle of, um, uh, our lifestyle of replacement is also trying to replace faith. Is not trying. It's been doing for, for centuries. The mankind continually did that to themselves where we stop doing things by faith because we are replacing every day by sight, by sight. 
by sight, by sight, everything we are trying to do it by sight. The many things that are coming to you, if you just depend on your sight, you will lose it. You will lose your opportunity, biggest opportunity. I'm, uh, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, uh, one of the most important uh, aspects of faith is faith provides you an uh, escape route. In many times that is the most important thing that you can have. As much as 9-11 uh, uh, is a dark story and a dark day and it has so much of negative impact to it. And in that time, in the, 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 uh, the same place, there are some faith stories. How they are able to go to the right place. How they are able to exit at the right time. How they are able to walk away from this thing. You know, I even know one of, one of the stories. The daddy would never, never go to work late. He would always go on time. He would always be there on time. This day, for whatever reason, his little girl asked him, Daddy, can you take me for ice cream? So he, he decides, he had the sense of that, that faith direction that he got, and he decides to sit and eat ice cream with her. He never did that in his life. He was always on time. He was always on time to school. He was always on time. He, that is his norm. But this one day, he had this, this, this sense, the urge that is coming from within, that can only be added, that, you know, when we have the urge is not enough. You have to add your faith to it. And when you can add faith to it, you will act upon it. And he chose to act upon it and uh, 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 I'm going to sit and eat, eat this ice cream with, with the daughter. As he was eating, his building, the building where he works collapsed. And I even know another story where, where somebody, uh, 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 God had spoken to that person on December the 25th that you need to get out. He was in, 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 in uh, Sri Lanka. He was in Sri Lanka. He spoke to him. God spoke to him. You need to get out now. And with that sense that he had and he applied his faith and got on the plane, plane and uh, left, left, that, left Sri Lanka. The very next day, just in few hours af after the departure, happened tsunami. The very hotel, hotel that he was living in completely got destroyed. Now I'm encouraging every one of us that we use this faith not only to build something that is unseen but also escape something that is unseen. Because the, you know very well the devil is always trying to steal, kill and destroy. That's his agenda. That's his plan. I just want us to be so slick that we can slip off easily from his hands. That's why Jesus said be like snakes. If you ever try to catch a snake, you will know what I'm talking about. Not lately, as though she caught many in the past. <laughs> she probably run as soon as she saw the snake. But anyway, uh, <laughs> we, we have to use our faith in such a way that we will slip, not get stuck. The problem here is many times we carry so much of our emotional baggage the emotional weight, we cannot be, we cannot move. That's where the devil wants to keep you still. He wants to make you mope about your life, mope about the incidents that has happened. He wants you to feel guilty about you. He wants you to live in that condemnation. He wants you to live in that guilt over and over and over. So he may make you sit there and when you get a hit, you get, you're right in the middle. That's why I tell you, I encourage you, be quick to let go of offense. The more you are off-ended, you are ending your progress. You are bringing a wrong end to us. This is where the devil is so good. He wants to play in the sight world what we see. 
And when we live in that, we become, you know, uh, malice. You, you don't know how malicious, malicious you are until you face certain things that you don't like. We become that. Those natures, that human natures, are the fallen human natures. Let me put it this way. Adam's natures, not God's nature. So, so we need to understand that God is giving us an opportunity to live the way he has ordained for us. An amazing life that he has ordained for us. A life of victory. The power that God has given to you is your faith that overcomes the world. Overcomes the sickness. You have faith to overcome anything that the devil can throw at you. If, if, if it needs to be eliminated, pray, bow. You know, many times we can't do that. We are so strong-willed that we don't want to bow before God. God says, no, bow before me. I will take that obstacle out. Because it is too much for you. Let me take that obstacle. Whatever needs to be moved, I will move it. Have you ever felt like you, you were hitting the dead end the more you tried? That's a good sign where you need to understand it's a God's battle, not mine. We need to let him handle that's where the crying, the praying has to come. Men are to pray without ceasing, Bible says. We, know, we should be praying continuously. It doesn't matter what it is. Turn things around quickly to him. Turn things around quickly to him rather than waiting for it to catch up. Because Bible says <coughs> his mercies are new every morning. What does that have to do with us? Morning is the beginning, right? His mercies are new in the beginning. So may as well you start using his mercies. Rather than getting it go boil up and boil up and boil up and boil up and then say, God help me. No. Many times it is not that God can help you, it is that you have been stuck in it too long, that you can't bear the weight of coming out. And I'll give you a good example. In my house I was growing a garden and it had a net. And in that net, uh, uh, some of these vegetables that I was growing started poking out when they are small. I saw them and I ignored them. There was this cucumber that was trying to come out of the net. I, I, I saw it and I ignored it. Next thing I know, it became this, this big. And it was stuck to that net. And it is in the net and I tried to pull it. You know what is happening now? The whole net is coming. It is ripping the whole net. That is, who, that is how we, have, we let it be, become too big of a problem. And when you are trying to solve it, you are creating more damage than help. That's why God many times says, leave it alone. Let me fix it when it is time. You go for what I am asking you to do. Hebrews 12 chapter. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by great so cloud of witnesses. All these people that we read in the chapter 11. These are all the cloud of witnesses. They did it. So now look at this. How do, we, how do they respond when, they go, when you go to them? I did it. Why can't you do it? That should be an inspiration for us. If you, you know, I, I made this statement in the past, I'll make the statement again now. If you want to condemn the world, do it by your faith. If you are acting in your faith, it brings a judgment upon them because they are to live by faith too. Every man is supposed to be living by faith. And that's why the Bible says every just man lives by faith. And we are required by God to live by faith. The world is required to live by faith. If you don't set a standard on how to live by faith, the world doesn't have a condemnation. They live free. Because you're not, you know, when everybody is, 
is crossing the line, where is the judgment? Isn't that what is happening right now? The laws are being changed because everybody is addicted to things. Everybody is addicted to drugs, so what do we do now? Let's normalize them. Are you with me on this? That is how we do, just because we, are, we have an issue with it, we try to normalize. And that's the same thing with homosexuality. People have gotten so used to it that they want to normalize it. You know why? Because we normalized adultery. We normalized adultery. That day we didn't cry. Today we do. Maybe it's too, too big. <laughs> God needs to sever. Therefore we also, since we are surrounded by so great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight. Every weight. When you are somebody that is going on a war mission, I was, I was, I was part of a, 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 a conversation with, uh, with my brother Jeremy a minute, a, a couple of days ago, about when he is getting ready to go into the battle, how they prepare themselves. The weight, the max weight that they can carry. They're not grabbing everything, you know, for us. When we are going from a town to town, my wife, Cap, if she has her way, she will pack the whole darn house <laughs> to bring it over there. But when you are going for a war, you can't do that. Maybe I'll need it then. No, you need to know what you need and you carry precisely because you're going for a battle. That means your, eight, your weight has to be optimum. It can't go beyond because you will fail where you are going. So that's the same way God is saying, lay aside every weight. Let me tell you something. Some of you may be overweight in body. Let me liberate you something. You are overweight in your spirit. Super heavyweight. You know my 600 pound life? That you have it because you are offended in everything. When you are offended, you are heavy. heavy. L let me tell you something. What does a heavyweight person do? He can't move. He or she can't move. When you are offended, like check yourself how long you are offended. That means you're fat. If nobody told you this, let me liberate you. Amen? You know, we, we die in our emotions with our overweight that we are carrying. See? And the sin which so easily ensnares us. Sin is ensnaring us so much. When you are overweight, you don't really need somebody to kill you. You die on your own. All you got to do is just trip. You're out. But in, anyway, uh, uh, th th this is what we are doing. We are ensnaring us in the sin, overweight of sin. Because we are normalizing things that are not to be normalized. We are living in a lifestyle. You know, many times you might think, oh, sin means committing adultery. Let me tell you something. If you are walking in fear, you're sinning. Because God has commanded, do not fear. He didn't suggest. He commanded, do not fear. Then what are you doing? I'm not fearing. It's hard not to fear. It is hard for you to not fear. But it is your faith that overcomes your fear. Instead of worrying about not fearing, let's focus on having more faith. Because faith, opposite, faith works in the opposite direction of faith, of, of fear. Faith and fear are two polar opposites. Faith, uh, if fear takes you to hell, faith takes you to? And let us run with endurance. The race that is set before us. If you want to endure long, what do you do? Lighten yourself. Cut down your weight. Cut down your weight. Spiritual weight I'm talking. 
mental weight I'm talking. We can't even sleep properly because we have too much of mental weight on us. Isn't that why God said, cast your cares upon me, for I care for you? It's like hiring somebody to do your job and you're still doing it. We have to remember there is a race that is set in front of us that we need to finish. If we are not looking for that race, remember this thing every time in life, many times, what is your, your inspiration? Many times I want you to remember, it is your dream that inspires you. For me, I have a dream. And because of that dream, I endure. Our lives, we have become so stale that we are not dreaming. We are not enduring. <coughs> I have a dream. To be able to care for my children well. To be able to provide for them well. That was a dream at one point for me. Because it is too far for me. And because of that, I was able to endure through any hardship that have come on my way. Whatever sacrifice I have to make, I made it because I had a dream. Looking on to Jesus... Looking on to Jesus. Why do we look on to Jesus? He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He not only starts you with faith, he also enables you to finish. What an amazing deal we have. You have he not only starts, you don't know how much of a faith seed that has been sown in you. If only you can let that faith pull you. Keep pulling yourself. You can do it one more day. Tell yourself, Donna, you can do it one more day. You can do it. Sheila, you can do it one more day. You can do it. You can do it. You know why? There is a dream at the end of this thing. And Jesus is holding that line for me. He is holding that line for me. He is pulling me all the way to that point. The author and the finisher of our faith. He won't let you die in the middle. He will continue to pull you to the end. Who for the joy, look at this, what did Jesus do? Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross? What a funny way. He endured cross you think is for your sake. Look at this. Look at all the things that we have to understand. The perspective that we have to understand from Jesus himself. Jesus was on a mission. He saw an end at it. And in that end you may be a part of it. But he was pushing toward it. He didn't, he didn't mind the cross because there is something at the end. There is a reward. That's why Bible clearly says in the Hebrews chapter 11, 6 verse where he says, It is impossible to please God without faith. And anybody and everybody who comes to him must believe that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. So who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross? Because he is looking at the goal, not the pain. Not the suffering, not the loss, not what is being taken away. He is looking at what is being gained. Despising the shame. He despised shame. You know, shame puts you in, in that place where you despise yourself. Every now and then I think of some of my past actions or some of my actions. And I'm like, I feel it, I, I, the shame comes on me. For silly things. I'm like, was I that stupid to do that? Thank God I have learned to forgive myself and move on. Otherwise I'd be living in that. And has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. If you want to sit down. Sit down there, not in your guilt, not in your condemnation, not in your fear, not in your self-loath. Some of you need to say good riddance to self-loath. Because you're living in it so much. Let me, I mean, like I, I, I always say this thing, nobody needs to do a nuclear war over us. He just needs to offend your feelings. 
you're dead. You'll drop everything. Even before you can talk, you're crying. Now you're out. You're so easy. Can we become tough for him? The devil can play you easily because you are so emotionally high. I can get to you easily. We have to learn how to operate in self-control, not in our emotional plight or emotional um, excitement. I want to read something uh, real quick in parallel. Go to Philippians 3rd chapter, starting at verse 12. Philippians 3rd chapter, verse 12 reads like this. Not that I have already attained. And I'm not bragging about I have attained. Paul is not even bragging that he have attained. Only Jesus has the right to brag that he have attained because he is sat on the right hand of the Father's throne. He done did it. But we, are, we don't have that right. Or am already perfected. But I press on. But I press on. It's okay. Let's do it one more day. It's okay. Maybe turn to your neighbor and say, it's okay. Because we, we, you know, we are on our way. We are pressing ourselves to go. Pressing ourselves to go into the next level that I may lay hold. Look at this. On one side of the, uh, 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 of the rope, Jesus is holding something for you. And on this side, you are not pressing yourself. When you are pressing yourself, what are you doing? On the other side, Jesus is holding something for you. When you can press on, what are you doing? You're also going where he has already planned and ordained for you. But I press on that I may lay hold of that which Christ Jesus has laid hold of me. That's why the word of God is so important. That gives you what he has already laid hold for you. That's where you connect your faith. This is the rope. This is where he is on the other side. Let me pull. Let me press. Let me press. Let me press. Because your past is always going to hold you down. It's like a magnet that is trying to pull you back. And that is what you, the biggest divorce any man, any woman need to go through is to, is to their past. That I may lay hold of, of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. Brethren, I do not count myself have apprehended, but one thing I do. Look at this. One thing I do. Can somebody say one thing? Okay. What is he doing? Forgetting those things which are behind. Forgetting. Shouldn't we pray for that? Lord, help me forget. Lord, help me forget. Lord, help me forget. You know, many times we forgive, but we don't forget. So we have to practice something. We have to forget. That is what the past is. That is what is trying to hold you. That is what is trying to hold your relationships. That is what is, is trying to hold you from going to your future. Forgetting those things which are behind. And the behind things could even be good. Your testimony is from the past. Let me tell you something. Don't hold on to them. Because if you are wanting God to repeat the same miracle as yesterday, you are wasting your time. You are wasting your time. He has a new thing planned. He has a new day planned. He wasn't planning to give you the same yesterday stale bread. That's why he modeled us saying, give us this day our daily bread. Brethren, I do not count myself have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to, do, to those things which are ahead. Which are ahead. I press. Come on, church. Press. It requires pressing. It requires pressure. Because the world puts pressure on you. You have to put pressure on the world. If you give in to the pressure of the world, you will die. But if you can put pressure on the world, 
How do you put pressure on the world? Put your faith in place. Faith puts pressure on the world because the faith has the power to overcome the world. So put faith upon it. Put faith again and again and again and again. Add faith to it so it will suppress the world. <coughs> Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. You know you're called in God, you're called in Christ Jesus, right? You have a call in Christ Jesus, so we respond to that call. We respond to that call, not to our feelings. Not to your skills, not to your talents, not to your jobs. Not, you respond to the call. You know, the other day I read a, a, a wonderful story. Multi-billionaire, the, the Hobby Lobby owner, the founder in the, uh, uh, of Hobby Lo Lobby. He made billions out of it. And he says, I'm going to give it away to a trust. Just going to walk away because God is calling me. I'm going to respond to his call. At the age of 80. Imagine that. He fought for Christian values. He fought for Christian principles every single day he can. He did business the way God has put on his heart. Now today he decides, okay, you know what? God is calling me elsewhere, so I'm going to give this to a trust. I'm moving on. Let the trust deal with it. You know, everybody has to say something about it, but it takes a lot of guts. Um, so I'm now going back to the, 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 the third verse of the 12th chapter. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself. I want you to think about that. When you, when people are being, uh, 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 when people are being mean to you, first thing you and me need to understand also is they have been mean to God. They have been mean to Jesus. They have been so mean to Jesus that he endured them. Such hostility. Nobody ever faced such a, such a hostility. But some of us are facing so much of that all around us. You are misunderstood in many ways. Many people are misunderstanding you. Let me tell you something. If you are crazy enough to believe in Jesus, that's a shouting ground for you. If you are misunderstood. If people are thinking you are a joke. If people are thinking you are confused. If you, that's a good place. And not only that, they're trying to throw things at you. They call you names. They call you this. That's okay. That's okay. They have to label you all the time. You black, you white, you this, you that, you that. Now you have a other name also. If you, I know I mentioned this in the past. I'm going to tell you again. You're a Christian nationalist. If nobody told you what is your new name, that is your new name. Because you believe in, uh, uh, in Christ and then you believe this nation, God created this nation. If you believe in those two things, you're qualified to be a Christian nationalist. And these people that are doing bad things to you are not godly. They're sinners. Lest... This is where he tells you, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. When you become weary and discouraged, you're putting an end to your progress. Never, ever let discouragement get to you. I know it is hard to stay encouraged. That's why I take inspiration from David. He says, he encouraged himself, Bible says. There was nobody coming to him and saying, Pat, 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 David, you're doing a good job. There was nobody doing that. He did it to himself, even while everybody that is around him, his own people, are trying to kill him. The Bible says he encouraged himself. I personally think that is where he wrote this psalm, where he said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, bless his holy name. You have not yet resisted to bloodshed. 
striving against sin. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as to sons. This is an exhortation that he is giving to us. My sons, do not despise the chastening of the Lord. When the Lord is correcting you, when the Lord is educating you, when the Lord is repositioning you, when the Lord is telling you, you need to shut up, you need to move with me, it's okay. You need to consider that as exhortation. But you know what you're doing? You're getting offended. You're getting offended. The outcome of offended, if you just break it down, you got it. Offended. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. We got to be bold enough to say, Lord, correct me. And even bold enough to accept correction. Are you mature enough to handle a rebuke? Ask yourself that question. Am I mature enough to handle a rebuke? We struggle with rebuke. We cannot take correction. The Lord's word does a correction for us. Let the word of the Lord correct us. Let the word of God transform us. Not you. Let the word do that for us. And when we are willing to let God do that, what are you? You're mature. You're maturing. You know, we always want to be identified as a, as a mature Christian. Mature this. But your maturity comes through how much you can handle a rebuke. How capable are you in handling God's chastisement? That's where your maturity lies. For, for whom the Lord loves, he chastens he, and scores uh, every son whom he receives. Every son. You know exception. If you want to be his son, you better be ready for his correction. If you endure, look at this, if you endure chastening, if you can take correction, God deals with you as with sons. There is your promotion. There is your promotion. For what son is there whom a father doesn't chasten? My dad did more than chastening. <laughs> he sharpened blades. But anyway. <laughs> but he, no, he didn't. But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers. How many became partakers? Don't excuse yourself. Oh, it's not me. I take correction. Let me tell you something. You are the first person that doesn't take correction. You're full of yourself. <laughs> we need to move from that. We need to be okay. Lord, correct me. I still have issues now. Even as much as I know I hear from God, I am always looking for correction. I listen for correction even from my little kids. Anybody that is talking, when I say things, when I am talking, I'm always looking for correction from the Lord, not from you. I know every one of us, one of us has a plan to make me a better preacher. But, <laughs> but, but I got to preach what he tells me to preach, right? <laughs> um, if... <laughs> Our oh, Lord. <laughs> but if you are without chastening, we of which all have become partakers, then you are illegitimate and not sons. <laughs> Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. I hated my dad as a teenager, but as I grew older, I respected him. Daddy, thank you for correcting. Daddy, thank you for not letting me drown. Otherwise, I would have destroyed my life. You helped me. We 
Because I have seen how much that correction paid for me. And there are many people, they still can't see it because they hate correction. They are so self-righteous. You're stuck in that self-righteousness that you don't want to be corrected. If you know it all, let me tell you something. Quit wasting your time with God. Furthermore, we have had human fathers who corrected us and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of Spirits and live? That's a clause you need to understand. The uh, earthly father, my earthly father did so many corrections. But I'm going to tell you something. None of his corrections are going to stop me from dying. None of them are going to stop me from dying. But this eternal father, the father of spirits, his correction will not only help me escape death, but he gives me eternal life. <coughs> For they indeed for a few days chastened us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit. Father corrects us for our profit to make us a better version of us. Imagine that all the time. When father is correcting you, what is he doing? He is updating you. Look at the software updates. It is designed, technically software updates are designed to correct the things that are wrong in the past and give you better features. But not every time they succeed on that, but every now and then they come up with Windows 8. But anyway, <laughs> some of you got it. But for our profit that we may be partakers of his holiness. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, but, but painful. Look at this. Look at, uh, now, uh, uh, joyful for the present, but painful. Nevertheless, afterward, it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to which who have been trained by it. Renew your spiritual vitality. He needs you to renew that. That's, a, that, that, that's God, that is God's plan for us. He wants us to renew. Therefore, strengthen the hands which hang down and feeble knees. You, are, you may be weak in certain areas. Don't let them die. Strengthen them. This is where you work out. Oh, my upper body is weak. I'm not going to lift upper body weights. Let me tell you something. You're going to be weak. That's why what is he doing? Instead of leaving them alone, give them some strength. Give them the, some strength. He knows there are weaknesses in our lives. He knows there are flaws in our lives. Bring strength into them instead of leaving them like that unchecked. And that is what the society is every day trying to do. Your weaknesses are being exalted. Oh, I am XYZ. He identifies as I'm identifying my problem. That means you don't need to solve it. That's what the generation is right now. They identify what is their problem, but they don't do a jack squat about it. What's the, pro what's the big deal when you know you are, uh, you have, oh, I have anger issues. Ha. Huh. Thank God you have a great revelation. <laughs> but what are you doing about those, uh, those anger issues? Are you with me here? Identifying is not the end of it. We have to deal with it. We all have weaknesses. We all have those feeble things in our life. We all have that. What do we do? We being, bring strength into them. And make straight the paths for your feet. So that what is lame may not be dislocated. But rather be healed. Let the healing begin. Let the healing begin. Pursue peace. Don't make it worse for you, you know. Don't make it worse for you. When we don't deal with our weaknesses, what are we doing? We are making it worse for us. 
We are making it worse for us because we are setting ourselves to fail, not to succeed. We are writing our own failure story. When you have been given an opportunity to write a victorious story. Then he says, pursue peace with all people and holiness. Pursue it. We pursue it, that doesn't mean we achieve it. But our pursuit is to be at peace. Many times you don't, we don't understand what peace is. Sometimes I need to fire somebody, that is peace. Otherwise if you are there with me, I'm hating you every day. That's not peace. Are you with me here? Sometimes burning the bridges are peace, that's peace. You know, I like one of the statements that my wife put out today by a doctor. He said, it's okay to burn your bridges. Sometimes it's okay to burn your bridges. We say don't burn the bridges, but sometimes you need to light them up. So that we don't go back. There are certain things that then they need to be buried and they, you don't need to have any connection with them. And those things have to be burned not kept alive that is what happens with us many times even why we fall back because we kept the bridge alive burn them and God said I, I'm, I'm taking your sin as far as uh, the east is from the west because they can never meet east and west cannot meet that's how far he is separating. You and your past, how far are they? You and your emotional question, how far are they? Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Just because you can quote scriptures or you can pray, nobody cares. If your pursuit is not peace and holiness. People don't like you when you are choosing holiness over, the, uh, 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 over perversion. But you still need to choose. You need to choose holiness. And again, it is a pursuit that you pursue, not impose. But anyway, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Lest any root of what? Bitterness springing up cause trouble. That is the one thing I always watch for. I don't want to have any bitterness toward you. Because it is going to hinder my progress, my spiritual progress. That's why if I need to eliminate you, I will eliminate you, but not hold bitterness toward you. I'm okay with you leaving me. I'm okay with you hating me. I'm fine. Either way, I don't care. I don't want to hold bitterness against you because it makes me do bad things. It not only makes me do bad things, it will also put me in a place where I can't be blessed by God. And what is it? Lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. That is one thing I can't afford. Let's think like that. I can't afford to be bitter. I made it so much for me. I, I practice it so much in my life. Sometimes I don't even forget who hurt me. I, I, I can't even remember who hurt me. What did they say? My, my wife comes to me in the morning asking, Oh, I'm sorry I hurt you last night. I'm like, what did you do? Because I have exercised so much not even to remember the hurt she caused. I want to focus more on the love she gives me, on the plan that God has put in my life through her. I want to focus on that, not be bitter toward her, but to be graceful toward her, have peace toward her. <coughs> but that doesn't mean she goes scotch free. <laughs> She has to pay the price sometimes. <laughs> uh, God is still working on me too, right? 
but by this many become defiled by bitterness. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau. You know what? Who for one morsel of food sold his birthright. For one morsel of food he sold his birthright. What are we selling? What are we trading our eternity for? What are we trading? What are we trying to keep with us? That we are willing to we are willing to give up on eternity. That is where your absolute surrender comes. What is it, God? You can take anything but this. I said that. I bargained with him so much. I'll do anything for you, God, but never become a preacher. Guess what? I've been preaching. I'll do anything and everything for you but this. But he's like, do that. Sometimes he feels like, are you really a psychopath? <laughs> the one thing that I don't want to give you, you want me to give that? But no, no, no. That is something that I, I am holding on to that I can't give to Jesus. But Jesus says, if you give that to me, let me show you how much more I can bring to you. How much more I can give to you. There is nothing that you need to hold on to. That God cannot or Jesus cannot replace or reproduce in your life. For you know that afterward when he wanted to inherit the blessing. This is where many struggles come. When he wanted to inherit the blessing he was rejected. By the time you realize it might be too late. Think about that. You know when we are babies we will be given the baby grace. My son right now the, the, the third one he clings to, to my, 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 my wife. If he does that again in three years. If he, is trying, my, if he has to be carried by my wife. No it's not going to happen. It is not going to happen. Because he is not growing. He has to grow. We made a commitment that he would f uh, feed from my, my, my wife for two years. After two years, no. I loaned all my kids through two, two years. What belongs to me? I'm just moving on. <laughs> That's my property. Don't forget. <laughs> oh, Lord, have mercy. <sighs> For you know that afterward, when he wanted to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. He was rejected. For he found no place for repentance. Imagine that. Imagine that. That where you couldn't find place for repentance. Though he sought it diligently with tears. Because when God shuts the door, it is over. Don't wait till, till he shuts the door. While we have, that's why Jesus says, while there is light, do the works of the light. The darkness is going to come. Then you can't do it. If you want to take advantage of grace, that is now, not tomorrow. For you have not come to the mountain that may be touched and that burned uh, uh, with fire and, and, and to uh, blackness and darkness and tempest and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words so that those who heard it begged that the word should not be spoken to them anymore for they could not endure what was commanded. And if so much as a beast touches the mountain it shall be stoned or shot with an arrow. And so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I'm extremely afraid and trembling. It scared the daylights out of them. But we don't have to live in fear. But this is where he said, but you have come to Mount Zion. Can somebody shout Mount Zion? 
That is the, 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 what we are call, going after is Mount Zion and to the city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable company of angels. To the general assembly and the church of the first born who are registered in heaven. Come on somebody. You know you are registered in heaven? You are registered in heaven. Maybe nobody counts you here. But I want you to know something. You have an account in heaven. That should draw so much courage for us. When the world is trying to reject you. When people are trying to reject you. When the uh, system is trying to reject you. You'll be like, nah, God accepted me. I'm a registered citizen of the kingdom of heaven. And as a matter of fact, you have to look for your identity through that. No matter where you go. That is what happens as an American if you travel to other parts of the world. They, they, they can't do certain things to you because you are a citizen of America. First one who are registered in heaven to God the judge of all. To the spirits of just men made perfect. To Jesus the mediator of the new covenant and uh, to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Hear the heavenly voice. See that you do not refuse who, him who speaks. For if they did not escape who refused him who spoke on earth. Much more shall we not escape if we turn away from him who speaks from heaven. The message that we are getting now is not from the earth, but from heaven itself. Whose voice then shook the earth, but now he has promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not only the earth, but also heaven. Now this, yet once more, indicates the removal of those things that are being shaken as of things that are made, that the things which cannot be shaken may remain. You know, the shaking of the Lord is upon us. You know, when the shaking happens, what happens? The things that can only stand, that can withstand that shaking stands, all the rest will fall. That is where we are right now. That is where we are right now. The shaking of the Lord is upon us. Can somebody say shaking of the Lord? This is the shaking from heaven that is, that is upon us. Yet once more, yet once more he is going to shake all the heavens and the earth. Everything will be shaken. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom which cannot be shaken, let us have grace by which we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. Look for constants. Look for constants. Look for that shelter in the constants. The, consta the constant shelter is the grace. The grace of the Lord that is our constant shelter. <coughs> that is what we need. For our God is a consuming fire. He is a consuming fire. That means he will consume. You know, the things that can be consumed will be consumed when the fire comes. The king, things that can withstand, they will withstand. You know, when we, when we went to this uh, Pine Island for this uh, uh, recovery operation or such, there was a scene that we have seen that just kind of baffled me or put me in a perspective. There was this big concrete wall that was built. When the flood or these winds have come, that concrete wall and that house completely got shattered. But right next to it, there was a tiki. And it just stayed like as though nothing happened. As though nothing has happened there, it just... I didn't even see a, a, a feather of it gone. It was just steady, still, and tight. 
So I want you to understand something. Maybe you might look feeble now, but when the weather, when the storm comes, you might be the strongest that's out there. You might be the strongest. You might look, people, people may have written you off because you seem feeble, because you depend on God, because you say, without God I won't do it, or you say those kinds of things, which people look at it as feeble things, but guess what? When the storm comes, that's the one that is going to make you stand. Those are the ones that are going to stand. What is set before you, these are the statements I'm going to end with. What is set before you and what is set by God are different. They both are different. What is set before you is something physical. What you are seeing, what you are approaching, what you are facing. And what God has set for you, set by God, is different. They both are different. But the way to God's setting is through what is set before you. What, Jesus, what God set for Jesus was glory. But what is set in front of you, in front of him is cross. He had to go through that cross to be able to inherit that glory. So don't underestimate what you are going through because that is what is getting you into your glory. When somebody is putting you to shame, don't, 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 don't think it is awful. Because you are going out of it and coming into glory. Coming into God's glory. You're positioning yourself for God's grace manifestation. You becoming weary and discouraged in your soul is your biggest snare against your growth. Don't you ever say you're tired. I'm tired of this. I'm sick and tired of this. You're spitting out a failure for yourself. So I'm going to repeat that again. You becoming weary or uh, and discouraged in your soul is your biggest snare against your growth. We need to be forgetting things that are behind and pressing on to things that are laid hold by God. We need to be forgetting things. That's a continual process. You do it continuously, not one day. Every day you do that, you press toward, as you are pressing toward the future, what are you doing? You are detaching from the past. This has to be a continual process. Every day, if you are trying to go forward, what are you doing? In this time and spectrum, if you look at the time and, and, and if you are looking at it, in this time you are here, the next time you are there, because you are pressing yourself out there. Every time you are pressing forward, what are you doing? Whatever was the past is behind you, not in front of you. That's why it is important that you move forward. You press forward, not backwards. May the Lord give us the strength uh, that we may endure these things and that we may walk in this, in this faith that allows you to endure the shame, the guilt, the pain, the discouragement and we will withstand anything and everything the devil throws at us. Amen? You got something out of this today? Alright, let us end our service with our confession. With our confession, three, two, one. We are Covenant Fusion Church. We are a body of believers. We are blessed to be a blessing. And we are filled for His glory. Amen.